I am going to show you the nickels that coin dealers want to buy from you right now and how much they would typically pay for them. Also, if you're collecting nickels, these are the nickels you would want to purchase first to fill your collection because they are starting to increase in value. Some of these are going up in value. So my name is Daniel and you are watching Coin Help You. If you need help with a coin, please go to our Coin Help You community. The link's in the description of this video in a pinned comment. If you want to buy coins from us and support our coin shop, it's PortsmouthCoinShop.com. And you can go over there and place an order, check out the coins that we have to offer. And that link is also in the description and the pinned comment. So let's get to looking at what nickels dealers are looking for right now. So we'll start off with shield nickels and we'll, we'll cover these as clearly as possible because most shield nickels dealers will want to purchase. Now, this video is not particularly about graded coins, but yes, dealers will buy the graded coins. They'll buy the higher end stuff. They'll buy the top pop. They'll buy the better grades, things like that. But most people don't have that. Most people have shield nickels. A lot of them are corroded. They have some pitting and some issues. But if you have some really nice shield nickels, dealers will buy any of them because all of them, as you can see here, have some value. Now, this is a little, this is double what, gray sheet has just to let you know that right now this is almost double most of these are but as you can see the pricing is pretty steady and there are key dates the 1871 is, is a better date it's a semi-key date as you can see it's worth a lot of money in the mint state grades as are most of these or at least all of them really but as far as what you're going to have you're probably going to have one in the low g grade and a dealer's not going to pay you 125, but if it was graded problem free, you could get up to 125 for these. So a ungraded coin, as long as it doesn't have any problems, not clean or anything like that, you know, a dealer's probably going to be around $50 for it. And they might send it off and see if they can get where they can sell it for about a hundred bucks. Maybe a little more if they have the grading fees in it. It just depends on how nice it is, and that goes for all of these. So I don't want to have to repeat myself. I mean, you know, anything that looks the grade and is solid for the grade and has no problems, because there's even coins that are in holders that look clean, and that's something that a lot of dealers will pass up on, even collectors. They want something that looks like the grade. So you buy the coin. The next one is a 79. It's also, and it's a regular strike. None of these are going to be proofs. These are all regular strikes that, you, that were in change at one time. Even though I know some proofs were in change, most of the proofs were not. This and the lower grades, as you can see, I'm kind of flipping through the pricing here. This is a, a key date. I mean, we're even in, you know, poor one, PO one, $350 is the high retail. So as you can see, if you can find a 79, it's authentic and you've got a good one. 1880. I had one of these come in the shop and it was not authentic, unfortunately, but it is a key date. It's a very expensive coin, as you can see in AU 50 plus 53, over 11,000. But in the lower grades, it's still valuable. We're talking a couple grand. Problem free, though. It's got to be problem free and has to be authentic. 81, that's another one that's a better date here. Um, key date. You can call them semi-keys, key dates, whatever, but they are better dates. They're more desirable dates. In the lower grade, you can see what it's uh, going for. $250 in the low grades, $275 up to, let's put it that way. These are the high retail values, as I've said before. So that's your shield nickels. Any shield nickel that's problem-free you bring to a dealer, you're going to get anywhere from $10 to $15, $20 bucks out of. If it's low-grade slick, partial date or something like that, probably not. But if you got a better date, you can get some better money out of it. Just know your dates. You know, that's that's one of the important things. And I do want to interject here. If you are struggling with some of these grades with on, on these coins, I have a photo grade over here on my website. Coinauctionshelp.com is the name of the site. And it has photo grades for all these nickels. And as far as like we're getting ready to do the Liberty Nichols, so we'll look at that real quick. This will show you what we're talking about and about good, good. And you can get an idea. Once you look at your coins and you compare it to these grades and you get kind of an idea of the grade of your coin, 
then you can look at the price guide and say, look, this is about what it's worth. But like I said, problem coins, clean coins, corroded coins are going to be worth less. If it's dug out of the ground, if it looks red, that's going to diminish the value. But yeah, check out the photo grade over here on coinauctionshelp.com. Then we got the Liberty Nickel. This is the Liberty Nickel price guide. Most Liberty Nickels before 1900 are going to have a little bit of a, a premium on them, but it shows these are increasing in value. Now, I can't get $13 out of G4 unless they are in a PCGS holder. I have coins that are dated these dates up front right now for you know, $1 and $2 a piece. So hopefully this, this is a trending upward movement for Liberty Nichols because they've, you know, they're not extremely huge on mintage. I mean, they're not really a, all of them are not really a high mintage. They're just something that people really didn't like the design and don't know a lot about them. And they see them in their, their change and they're older and they think that might be worth something. But as you can see, this is what they're worth. But the, the dates that the dealers look for the most are like the 1883, no cents. These are more common. I don't I don't know about the values on these. I see these so much. You know, it's the with cents that are the ones that are worth the most. So these are typically bought by dealers. I mean, we're talking a couple bucks, five bucks, something like that. Now you're at 1883 with cents. That is a little more desirable. We had an issue with people plating them or passing them off as gold. So therefore they put the cents on them later on into the production, which made these more rare because there's not as many, but still 16 million, but that many haven't survived. The problem you have with the Liberty Nichols is that they, there's so many of them that wore down that all you can see is the outline of the face and the ear hole. I mean, we're talking really low grade coins here. And that's how most of them have survived because they did circulate. Then you have the 1884, which is a better date, as you can see. When you get down to the lower grades here, um, we're looking at about, you know, high retail of 35. Now, when you're looking at the gray sheet for the Liberty Nichols, most of these are going to be uh, G4. They're dollars at the wholesale. Dealers are probably going to pay 75 cents, 50 cents for them. So that way they can sell them for a dollar or two. And that's in G4, even very good. Now in fine, they start when they start showing some of the Liberty, uh, they're gonna be worth a little bit more money. Now that doesn't in, include the key dates. The, the semi-key dates and the key dates are going to sell for a little more of a premium. They'll pay a little bit more for them. 1885 is the key date of the series. As you can see, even in the lower grades, now it's trending downward. The problem is that the, there's, so many out there that are damaged, and there are counterfeits, so you have to watch out for that. 1886 is a semi-key date. It's a little better date as well, as you can see in the lower grades, what it's selling for. You should be able to get at least 50 bucks out of one of them, even in the lower grades. Loans is problem-free. 1887 is another one. And we can take a look at the lower grades. What most people are going to have, you're not going to have the AU. Most of them are going to have maybe an L and a Liberty or less. And as you can see, you're looking in the $20 range, maybe $10 range. But still, for a nickel that you find and you put them together and you go through them and look for these dates, you get a little more money out of them than just a dollar from a dealer. Sometimes these get lost in the fray because people bring in bags and unsorted coins and you're going through them and counting them out. And sometimes you'll see an 1880, 1888 might be in there, but it's really an 1883. And it's just sometimes it's hard to tell. A lot of problem coins. But as you can see, this is what uh, a, a very good 10 and a very good 8. 1889 is another uh, decent date. And, and the lower grades are not so much, but you can still, as far as get a little more money out of them than your normal, uh, more common dates, I should say. And then a 12S, this is a key date here. And the thing about this one is the mint mark on these, because this is the only, besides the 12D, this is the only one with the mint mark, and the mint mark is right here by this dot. Now, this is the same mint mark that is on the 1909S VDB, believe it or not. Same mint mark punch was used. It don't look the same because it's on a nickel, but that's where your mint mark is on these. And as far as value is concerned, even in the lower grades, 
you can see that it sells for well over a hundred dollars. Buffalo nickels. Now to make this kind of quick, all your Buffalo nickels in the teens with a mint mark are a little better, but you do have some key dates and we'll look at those. It's a 13D type one. Now type one is on a mound. It's got the little mound here. You can see the roundness. Your type two will be more flat. It's on a plane. So, you know, your 13D is a little better. Uh, we got the higher grades up here. Most people are going to have them in the lower grades. The problem with these is that partial dates are going to sell for less than this. These prices are for full dates. Dealers really want full dates for Buffalo Nichols because that's where the value is. That's where the desirability is because those dates weren't off so bad. And no dates are just not worth anything. I mean, don't get me wrong. If it's got a mint mark and it's a type one on the mound, you can tell it's a 13 and it's got an S or a D. Yeah, I mean... Dealers might pay a little bit more for it, but not much. You, you, the full dates is what you look for on these. So this is a 13S Type 1. It's another one worth a, you know, in the low grades, it's going to be worth you know, 40 bucks, ungraded 30 bucks. The 13D Type 2. Now you can see this is uh, flat. It's on a plane. This is another one. If the dates weren't off this, you can't tell if it's a 13 or not. So... You want to have full dates on anything that's type two, anything that's on a plane. I know people can nick a date, but once you nick a date them or to, to reveal that date, you your the value is just so diminished at that point, even though it's still a better date or a key date. So this is a little better date. Your D and your S are better dates on these. And they're the key dates. So you've got that and you got the 13 S type two. This is the key date of the series. So you can see even in the lower grade, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks is what it sells for. 14D is a little bit better. And like I said, I recommend buying a gray sheet. You can get one for $35 at the latest one. This will help you out if you're really wanting to know what a dealer is going to pay you. They're going to pay you less than gray sheet for it. But you'll get an idea of what these are actually selling for because PCGS is very high retail. Uh, 14S is a little better. Your 15D is a little better. And like I said, your teens, your 15S. So you want to look for the teens with the mint marks. And 17D, 18D, 18S, your 19, 19D. And here's your, now you're in the 20s. So your 20D is a little better, but not all your 20s are better. A 1920 is not really better unless it's a higher grade. Lower grades, it's not, but this one's worth a little bit of money, especially in the higher grades. It's hard to find that 20D in the higher grades. But you're talking about a coin that's going to have a little bit of value, as you can see. You scroll down even in the lower grades. So it makes it a little bit of a semi-key day in the higher grades. Buffalo nickels in the higher grades are worth more. Condition grades is very important. These coins were popular. They did circulate. So there's so many of them available in these lower grades that they're not worth as much. And that's why you'll see them increase in, in the higher grades dramatically. 21S is another better date. As you can see in the lower grades there. 23S, pretty decent. A lot of the 20s get passed over. So you want to look through and look for mint marks and things like that. 24D, it's another one. And as you can see, if you had one, which is very difficult to find, but if you had one in A58, 600 bucks, but you're not going to find those very often. That's why they're worth the most. And so when you, that's why when you get down into the lower grades, it's just the, the value is just diminished because there's just more of them in the lower grades. Like I said before, and I don't want to keep repeating myself. 24S is another one. It's a little better. It's not the not one as good as the other ones, but it's in the 20s, a little easier to find. A 25D is another one. 25S is another one. And then you have the 26S. And then you have the 31S. It's another one that's a little better. In the lower grades, like I said, it's not worth as much, but it does have a little bit more of a premium than the rest of them. Because most dealers are going to pay 50 cents to 75 cents for these. They might pay you a dollar or more if they have uh, almost full horns. Because, I mean, that's very important that they have more detail, full dates. You know, you bring a bunch of partial dates and no dates and all that, you're probably going to get around 10 cents, 20 cents. Be lucky if you get more than that.
Then the Jefferson Nichols. Now, most dealers will buy a complete set. They can pay a certain amount for a complete set. You can sell them. We know the proofs are lower mintage. Most of them are, but that's not what this video is about. This is about this stuff you would find in circulation. The early 38s and 38Ds, there are some reverse. And like I said, this is really not about the varieties, but there are different reverses on these. They use different reverse die pairs. But you can look and see that uh, 39S is a little bit better. 38 uh, S and D, really not a lot of value in these. Uh, the, the silver uh, versions during the war times was 1942 to 1945, and they must have that mint mark over the uh, Monticello building. That's very important. I know there's other varieties, and that's what you'd probably look for in these. Those are going to be the ones that most dealers are going to look for are the varieties, because the, the, that's just where the value's at in Jefferson Nichols. There's not a whole lot of value otherwise. So even though this video is really about the coins you can find in circulation, there are the coin and currency sets that have the, the satin mat 94 and the, the 97 versions, and, and dealers will pay a premium for the earlier proofs, you know, like the, the 38s and the 40s, 1940s, because they're lower mintage. But just to say, you know, as far as Jefferson Nichols are concerned, there's just not a lot of them that are worth a bunch of money. You know, obviously you can look for decams in the 66. I kind of spread the, the field a little bit for the Jefferson Nichols because of the fact that there's just not a lot of them worth a bunch of money, but there are some that are desirable. And Buffalo Nichols from, and Bison Nichols, I should say, from 2005, and all those uh, Kill Shield and the Lewis and Clark, I mean, they changed the design in 2006, and they did different designs in 2004 and 2005. Those are normal. I have a lot of people call me and ask me about those. There is some varieties. There is a spear bison and things like that. But like I said, it's best to buy you, like I said, a 2025 Red Book price guide or get one of these gray sheets. You can go down through and you can see which ones are worth the money which ones the dealers might buy and what they might pay it for. It's just best to be educated in this because what's happening is, is people are getting into this and they're getting phone apps and they're getting online and watching all these YouTube videos and they're not exposed to the proper information. They go to a dealer and they think the dealer's trying to rip them off. That's not the case. If, you've, if you're armed with a red book and this gray sheet, you cannot get yourself ripped off because you will know the potential value, but you do have to be realistic. That dealer's probably going to pay you less than gray sheet for it. And he's also going to scrutinize it to death because we don't want to buy clean coins and corroded coins and pay a, a, the same price as we do for problem-free coins. That's just how it works. And we know better sometimes than most people coming in our door the condition and what, what grade a coin is. So thanks for watching my latest video. Please like, share, and comment. And have a great day.